welcome back to Jolie Farms in Ecuador. It's Joe and Lisa again. Um, so it's not clickbait. We did leave Ecuador only for four days. Well, four days on the ground, a week of trout, you know, a couple of days each way for travel. Yeah, it is. It's a long trip and uh, the price of airfare has gone way up. But we went back to Texas because we um, wanted to celebrate our grandson's uh, fourth birthday. Yes. And we haven't seen him since he was born. That's right. That's right. We got locked down and travel restrictions finally lifted enough that we could travel without any problems. And we really didn't have any issues traveling. Just tired. That's it. Yeah, we had um, really, you know, um, a pretty good trip. We got to visit with family and my son and daughter-in-law and my aunt and her husband and got to, uh, you know, spend a little time shopping, but most of the time we just spent with the grandson, just kind of playing and... Soaking um, it up. Yeah, getting to know him better. He's quite the intelligent little guy. Yes, he is. One of the things we did while we were there, though, is uh, the kids took us out to a place called Topsy Exotic Game Ranch, which is in... Uh, Where is that? Middle of nowhere. Cop Copper's Cove, out yeah. in that area. Yeah, yeah Land Passes, Copper's Cove out in that area and uh, boy it was a lot of fun uh, they have all this exotic game that's been rescued etc and so you buy the little bags of food and you know you throw it out and the, all the animals come running um, so yeah they had just about everything in this uh, game park I want to say probably a couple hundred acres something like that seemed pretty big yeah and they had Audad sheep there um, they had mountain goats uh, they had blessed buck, uh, black buck antelopes everywhere. They had kudu. They had zebras, which I'm, I'm a big fan of zebras. Those things are cool. So pretty. And the zebra kind of scared my uh, grandson a little bit because he tried to stick his head in to get food. <laughs> <laughs> tried to stick his head in the car. Well, evidently, let you... there's a camel that likes to, to stick his head all the way in your car and go for the bag of food. So. Yeah, yeah. the zebras figured that out too, and he was going to do the same thing. My grandson's a little scared of that, but they don't let you get out of the cars there because some of these angel animals can be dangerous, so uh, you have to stay inside the car. Um, they even had some Scottish Highland cattle. That was kind of cool, the long-haired looking cattle. Um, we'll play some video of that. And they had camels and uh, they had bison, you know, buffalo. The buffalo were kind of cool. The buffalo was really cool. He actually came right up to the car. Yeah. Huge animal. It's a little scary because he's big enough he probably could have turned the car over. <laughs> but they had fallow deer, mule deer, you know, white-tailed deer. They had emu and ostrich and even a llama. Yeah. Yeah, we saw a llama there. Yeah. So we see llamas everywhere here, but for Texas, a llama is a little more unusual. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a short visit just to kind of get caught up with the family. And, um, you know, we did a little shopping because... I'm so hard to buy for my feet are so big and mm -hmm. I'm so tall it's hard to buy clothes for me here in Ecuador that's a note to people that come to Ecuador if you're really tall you're probably gonna have to import your clothes and your shoes that's me yeah you know I wear a size 13 plus so I, I can get 13s here and it's limited to either one black or one brown that's about it yeah. Uh, not a lot that I can get. I only at one store, pretty much. Yeah, and the problem is they're all, you know, six feet wide. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you can have shoes made here, like leather dress shoes, uh, things like that. We're going to do a, a uh, interview with a shoemaker right here in Bill Obama coming up, a good mm -hmm. friend of mine. And um, so we'll show you how he makes his shoes and all the ins and outs of that. And they get made fairly cheap here. I'm really impressed with that. Suits, you can have a suit made here, super cheap, and you go in, pick the fabric, the style you like, make your really nice custom suit. Yeah. So yeah, we had a short visit with the family. We did do a little eating out. Yes, we did. We had a favorite mes Mexican restaurant around the corner from the uh, little B&B that we stayed at, and we frequented there quite a bit. Yeah, it's, uh, it's called Jalisco's there in Belton, Texas, and we you know been eating there for years and so we we're glad to go back there and eat and a couple of them challenged us on our spanish while we were there so. she was wonderful yeah and so yeah it was good you know um 
having some real Mexican food or Tex-Mex, whatever you want to call it? Yeah, I'll, I'll stick with Tex-Mex, but it was really good. It was one of the few things I think that we miss about going, you know, about being in the States is the good little Mexican restaurants. Yeah, we had uh, fajitas there one night that were fabulous. Mm, fajitas. A beef chicken fajita mix. And yeah. That was really good. Um, we did visit um, some other restaurants. Some were a bit disappointing, quite frankly. Um, so, yeah, we had some not good experiences with food uh, as well as some I think, good ones. Yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, with pandemic and people shutting down and the cost of living going up so much in the States, the, the challenge of trying to keep quality food on a plate and, um, you know, meet the needs of your customers without, you know, making it too expensive to eat out. That's for sure. And I think that's a global issue. Yeah, there's one thing we noticed is um, Texas has always been considered an extremely friendly state. And uh, in the bit of shopping that we did there, we noticed some cranky people. It's a lot of cranky you know, people. From, from the checkout people to just general people wandering around. Mm -hmm. And... I, you know, I'm trying to figure out what to blame it on. One thing that I think, without getting too political, is there's an invasion from the south, from the southern border in Texas. Um, obviously, they're being inundated, and I don't think anybody could reasonably deny that. But there's also an invasion coming from the west coast. Uh, the Californians are moving in, and talking to the local people and to, you know, my family there, Californians are coming in, and they're paying builders double what they're asking for the houses that they're building. And so that's created a bit of a problem for locals being able to afford to buy, you know, reasonable housing. And so that's kind of sad to see. And then um, our kids live real close to one of the larger local lakes there. The lake levels there, there's three lakes right in a row, not including the Highland Lake chain, but just three reservoir lakes there. They're all down 30, 40 feet. And so they're not in the middle of a drought necessarily. Yeah. Um, I was at a water board meeting uh, before leaving Texas, and we had somebody there from the state water board who said that within 10 years, Texas was going to be out of water at that time, and that's been about seven years now. Yeah. So looking at this happening, it's all going, being sold to the cities, you know, the, the larger cities, and so these reservoirs are being tapped, I mean, being drained. Well, and when where we lived in, in Texas, we were outside of Austin, so we were more in the hill country, and uh, it's absolutely amazing the amount of housing complexes that have gone in and talking to different people at the bank and so forth those went up you know in a very short amount of time so we're not talking about quality homes going up by any means i mean it's just slapping stuff together to stick built yeah to to support the influx of uh, all the people coming in yeah so we really were, were kind of left there grieving for Texas and the United States. We had gone to our bank when we first uh, arrived there and to take some money out and, you know, I mean, they're demanding to know what we're going to use the money for. Yeah, evidently once you put it in, it's no longer your money. Yeah, so, you know, seeing that kind of thing happening and that's just letting me know that, you know, the U.S. is really no longer a free country. It's, it's sad. It breaks our heart. Um, you know, we love our country, but... Um, I guess that this is just home for us now. Yeah, and we don't miss the traffic. There's so much traffic with the influx of people coming in. And <coughs> you had a problem with the driving in the flat land. Yeah, and just the constant motion um, yeah. around you. And it was just like, we're so used to being in the mountains now, you don't have that. Yeah. It was it was interesting. So a lot of you know optical input was going on, <laughs> and that was really kind of weird. You had to get used to it all over again. Well, the highways and the freeways. I mean, everything was just so crowded and so packed. And you know, we did get when we first got there. Um, my aunt and her husband took us to a, our old family favorite in Liberty Hill, Texas, the Dahlia Cafe. So shout out to the Johnston family. Um, we understand that you know that restaurant is changing hands as we speak. Um, they've done a wonderful job for a long time there in Liberty Hill, and uh, the lunch was just as good as it ever was. We enjoyed it immensely, and we hope that, uh, Brian, you all you guys will come down here and visit us. 
you know you got a free stay here. That's right. So, okay, man, we, we, you know, that's kind of our trip. It was just, um, it was short, but sweet. Um, some parts were bittersweet, yeah. to be honest. Um, but we so enjoyed visiting with our son, daughter-in-law, and, you know, the rest of our family. And, and Ethan, we enjoyed you so much, buddy. Love you, baby. All right. So that's all we have for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thank you.